Well, good morning. Welcome back to the Broadcast Retirement Network. This is BRN AM for Tuesday, November 14th, 2023. And our top story today, over-the-counter hearing aids makes hearing and improved accessibility for consumers a reality. Joining me now to discuss this, Dr. Annie Duchin is an audiologist with Sony and WS Audiology. Annie, it's great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us on the program this morning. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Yeah. Um, hearing loss, it's become a, uh, it's, it's not just an older person's issue anymore. I mean, when I think of hearing loss and I think of, you know, maybe how it's displayed in the mainstream, in the media, you often see an older person go, eh, eh. Uh, but really this is something that impact me like that. This is something that really impacts uh, younger people as well. Absolutely. So, I mean, technically hearing loss can happen at any time in life from birth into older age. We do know that hearing loss is more prevalent. There's age related hearing loss that people experience as they age. And so that's typically what we end up seeing in the media or in articles or things we're learning about, but it can affect people across the lifespan. And in terms of audiological testing, um, the, what's the current recommendation in terms of getting tested for hearing loss? Because people Hearing loss can be gradual, and for younger people, when you go to a concert, you're getting a lot of noise, a lot of uh, waves, sound waves sent to you. How frequently should you go to an audiologist to get your hearing tested? That's a great question. I think when it comes to deciding when to get your hearing tested, because even before we talk about frequency, most older adults or adults in general are like, I haven't had my hearing tested since I was a kid in elementary school, right? It's about when should you have that first, what we would call a baseline test. When can you have your hearing evaluated? There's no wrong time to get your hearing evaluated. So if you feel like something is changing about your hearing or you're noticing certain situations are harder, maybe you walk into a noisy restaurant, you love going to with your friends and all of a sudden you realize I'm kind of having a hard time participating in this conversation. That's a great time to get your hearing evaluated, to check in on your hearing health. Um, and then the cadence of that depends on what the results look like. And, and most, my understanding is a lot of insurances um, will cover or can cover an audiological visit. Um, and even some aspects of Medicare and Medicaid will do that as well. So it is something that you shouldn't forgo, you should do because it is covered by many insurances. Yeah, it depends on the plan and the insurance. Absolutely. But there is typically some coverage. And the way I think about it is that hearing health should be as prevalent as eye health, right? If you regularly get your eyes tested or looked at, you should also be getting your hearing tested too, because both of those things contribute to your overall brain health and well-being. Yeah, absolutely. And that's why at age 51, I'm using these because I can't see. Not only can I see, but I can also hear as well. Uh, let's talk about treatment because um, there are a lot of different treatment plans for hearing loss, there's cochlear implants, there's hearing aids, but there has been a development from the uh, FDA allowing over-the-counter uh, hearing aids. We'll talk a little bit about that development and what it means for even younger people. Absolutely. So the whole point of this FDA ruling, this change was to make hearing health care more accessible to more people, make it easier to find, make it easier to get, make it more affordable. And so this concept of this new category of hearing devices, which are called over the counter hearing aids is getting at just that. Can we reduce the barriers for people to get the access they need for these products? Now, an important call out here is that there's all kinds of hearing loss, ranging from just a little bit of hearing loss all the way to profound hearing loss or what people typically understand as deafness. These devices over the counter hearing aids are designed for people with perceived mild to moderate hearing loss. So they're for a specific category of people. And that matters when you think about your treatment plan, you want to make sure that you're choosing a product that would align with the type and amount of hearing loss that you're experiencing. Yeah, really good point. Annie, I need to take a very quick break. We'll come back. We'll talk about choosing the right over the counter hearing aid. There's a lot that goes into it. You're going to want to stay tuned right here on BRN AM. Imagine a new television network that will make you richer, healthier, and in control of your financial future. This network is for the policewoman in Nashville, Tennessee, the baker in Dubuque, Iowa, the teacher in Lexington, Kentucky. 
We want to make the idea of savings and retirement culturally relevant. But what do you see as a defining issue of the midterms? Especially for the smaller businesses, I mean, they are the lifeblood of the American economy. Featuring exclusive interviews, current affairs, and docu-series. 33 yeah. years old, you retired early. The philosophy is money only matters if it helps you live a life that you love. But you gotta start thinking about retirement as soon as you get in. The Broadcast Retirement Network will drive very high engagement with premium partnerships. So this isn't retirement and savings for your parents or grandparents. This is for all Americans. And we're gonna change the way you think about money. Welcome to the next frontier of retirement and savings. This is BRN, the Broadcast Retirement Network. Andy, thanks so much for staying with us. Really appreciate you hanging around for segment number two this morning. Absolutely. Happy to be here. Yeah. So um, you get the baseline audiological test, you, or maybe you're finding that you have a little bit of hearing loss. Where do you go? Where does an individual go if they fall into that specific category uh, to find an over-the-counter hearing aid? It's a great question, Jeffrey. And actually, I'd, I'd back it up one, one step to explain that this category of over-the-counter hearing aids, part of what's different about them is that you don't have to get a formal a hearing evaluation. You don't have to sit in front of an audiologist or a hearing instrument specialist to get that diagnostic evaluation. It's part of what reduces the barriers for people to get these products. Now, an important call out is if you're not going to get your hearing evaluated, there are other ways you can check it. Like on the Sony website, we have a screening. You could see, Hey, am I even a candidate for this? Right. I want to know if this is right for me. But in addition to that, there are different kinds of products in different places. So they can be purchased in retail places, right? Like a Sony.com or a Best Buy or in some hearing care uh, professional offices. But in addition to that, when you think about which device do I want to choose, which is right for me, I think there's a few things you can consider because this market and this category is growing very fast. There's a lot of choices. And I think for a person that doesn't have any experience with hearing, hearing loss or hearing aids, it can be kind of overwhelming. And so a few things you can consider when it comes to a high quality and safe product is something that is self-fitting. So there's a category of over-the-counter hearing aids that are self-fitting, which means you do an evaluation with the product on your ears. This is what our Sony over-the-counter hearing aids do. So they are customized and fit to your hearing loss. Good products have this sort of self-fitting option and they also have safety guards within that. So if you're with outside of the category, or the amount of hearing loss for this product, like in our app, it will give you a heads up like, hey, this might not be right for you. And we can help with making other recommendations. So it's both about seeking the location, of course, but knowing as you go in there, do I have enough information to make a choice and understanding what is a good and high quality choice with all the options out there? Yeah, it's kind of sounds like when you go to 31 Flavors and you or Baskin Robbins and you try to find the right flavor. Sometimes a flavor, you might think a chocolate but you really wanted Rocky Road, so it's important to dial that in. Let's talk about um, you know finding the right uh, the right product. Can you even with these over counter over the counter hearing aids? Can you use your device like a phone to dial in and get it um, tailored to your needs? So say you 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 lost some of the higher range or you lost some of the lower range. Can you tailor the devices, the Sony devices in particular, to a specific range of hearing loss? That's a great question, Jeffrey. That's exactly that self-fitting uh, process that I just mentioned. So there are over-the-counter hearing aids and not all of them are self-fitting. So the ones that are self-fitting, yes, you can tailor to your mild to moderate hearing loss. So our Sony over-the-counter hearing aids, we have two different styles, which we can talk a little bit more about, but both are self-fitting, which means you set them up with your smartphone. You can use Android or iOS device to, to do it. And we have an app, it's called the Sony Hearing Control app. It's a very smart app that works with your hearing aids to create a simple and easy process to set up and customize your devices. And so it basically walks you step-by-step. Step. Here's what you do step-by-step step along the way. Here's how we'll initially customize these devices based on your responses, this hearing evaluation within the self-fitting process. And then you have an opportunity to customize both sound quality and level of the devices after that self-fitting process. And, and what about care? Uh, I'm thinking about, especially a younger person or, or maybe a little bit older like myself, they may be active. They may go to the gym. They may jump into a pool. Uh, in the old days, you know, I'm thinking about the, 
the over the ear, outside the ear, uh, maybe they weren't as um, receptive to uh, chlorine water? Great question. So our devices are water resistant. We have two different devices and the our CRE C10, this is a sleek and really discreet design. This is for someone who wants something to support with their hearing loss, but maybe they're more concerned about how it looks, right? They want it to have that nearly invisible look. And then we have our CRE E10. This is our earbud style and it's a rechargeable device. Now our E10 has a super high sweat and water resistance rating. Although it's really important for me to call out these hearing aids and almost no hearing aids still are waterproof. So we would never recommend that someone jumps in a pool with our hearing aids, but they are super, super durable. So you should use them when you're being active. If you're running outside, if you're doing something, even if you have a little sweat going on, you'd be totally fine with both of our devices. Yeah, so you probably want to stay out of the uh, the, the ocean probably as well because that salt water, man, that'll really that mucks up a lot of uh, technology. Uh, let's last thing I want to ask you is is you know we are we just have the beginning of over the counter hearing aids and there's constant development, there's constant R and D going on. Is there anything we can expect in the future? I mean, will these devices get even smaller? I know it's hard to predict, but you know the folks at Sony they're they're pretty smart. They, they are always on the cutting edge of new technology. So what can we expect from hearing aids, um, hearing devices in, in the future? I think when it comes to the future, reflecting on what we have now, right? We have these products that are specifically designed like real hearing aids. They have all the fundamental features of real hearing aids. And what I mean by that is when you think about what a hearing aid is really meant for, right? We know that for people with mild to moderate hearing loss, they might do okay in quiet. They're like, oh yeah, I'm getting by, I'm good. But you step into a noisy place and that's where you start to struggle. So what the hearing aids really focus on is helping people hear better in noise. And we have different features built in. Some are automatic. In the E10, we have some additional manual and noise features to make sure that when you step into that space, you have some more control over that environment and what you want to focus on. And I think that's the type of technology we will continue to improve over time. Now, I can't speak to the specifics of what will change and grow with the Sony products, but we know that Sony is dedicated to this category and not only building awareness around hearing health, but making sure we can design products that help break down things like stigma, right? We want our products to look different than that big gray behind the ear hearing aid that you maybe remember from yep. your grandparents or that we still see in articles today. I wish people would stop using those because there's way cooler stuff out there, right? But also what's inside? How can we help people participate in the things that matter to them? And usually that's a noisy place. Yeah, well, Annie, it's really important technology. And, and look, there are so many people of all age ranges affected by hearing loss. So one more opportunity to help those really important. Annie, great to see you. Thanks so much for joining us. And we look forward to having you back on the program again very soon. Absolutely. Thank you so much for having me. And that wraps up this episode of BRNAM. Have a topic of interest, someone you think we should talk to, drop us a line. And don't forget for all the latest curated news in lifestyle, wellness, finance, tech, so much more all in one place. Check out today's edition of our daily newsletter, The Morning Pulse. Want to search our archives, check out our latest content? Well, you can visit our website. We're back again tomorrow for another edition of BRN AM. I'm Jeff Snyder. Stay safe. Keep on saving. And don't forget, roll with the changes. Now is your opportunity to co-create content around any topic on the first lifestyle and wellness network. Reach a global audience through our platform and co-own exclusive branded content. All of our programs are available on demand and also as audio only podcasts, so you can take us on the go. Broadcast Retirement Network, available anytime, anywhere, and on any device.